It's going down between Cardi B and right-wing political commentator Tommy Lahren. It all started when Cardi went off on Twitter about the US government shutdown and made some pretty good points. This is really serious, bro. This is crazy. Like, our, our country is in a hellhole right now. All for war. Now, Fox presenter Tommy Lahren, genius political mind herself, hit back, calling out Cardi by tweeting, Looks like I am Cardi B as the latest genius political mind to endorse the Democrats. Ha! Huh? Keep it up, guys. Hashtag MAGA2020. Cardi B responded, Leave me alone, I will dog walk you. So, in celebration of that wonderful response, here are some other times Cardi B has made some incredibly compelling points about the state of the world. Watch and learn, Tommy. Following the horrific Parkland massacre, Cardi slammed Trump's proposal that the solution isn't tied to gun control, but arming teachers. In an Instagram post at the time, she wrote, Y'all want teachers to effectively prepare our youth, carry straps, and bust back at school shooters, but at the same time, only pay them $40,000 a year. Another way Cardi is dismantling toxic ideologies, she's vocal about her time as a stripper, helping to destigmatize sex work. In an interview with Cosmopolitan, she said, People say, why do you always gotta say that you used to be a stripper? We get it. She added that the answer is because y'all don't respect me because of it. And you're going to respect these strippers from now on. Just because somebody was a stripper, don't mean they don't have no brain. Or there's the time she took aim at the UN for not doing more to condemn the slave trade in Libya. In an Instagram story late 2017, she called them out for not making it their problem or priority to help what's going on in Libya, adding that what's happening there is shameful and disgusting. But you have to be 35 years old to run for president in the US. Kidding, no one needs another celebrity in the White House. But if they had to have one, Cardi would be a strong contender. Collabs are great. It's like dipping your french fries into a McFlurry. Beautiful on their own, better together. Think Queen and Bowie, Madonna and Britney, Lil Wayne and Paris Hilton. Fortunately for us, there's chat and more potential collabs on the way. Here are our faves. Do your thing, Twitter. Rumours that Harry Styles and Ariana are collaborating were fueled by highly reputable and authentic evidence. He followed her on Instagram. <gasps> Not that it's an entirely unsubstantiated claim. After Harry followed Timothy Chalamet, we got them interviewing each other. Now Harry's followed Ari, maybe we'll get a song. Or an extensive set of tips for really good hair. Speaking of very charismatic hairdos, the 1975's Maddie Healy wants to work with Harry. He tweeted, Hey Harry Styles, me and George really want to produce your next album. Hit me up if you want it. It's cool if not though. I know you're like super busy etc. Love! And look, Harry, I don't want to tell you what to do. You're one of the most successful young people in the world and I'm... Not. But I am going to tell you what to do, and that is the album with Maddie and George. Think of the beautifully on brand collection of sad songs in a major key. Think of the fans. Think of the matching tats. And finally, Sean Mendes and Niall Horan, the human personification of a pair of Labradoodle puppies, have been tweeting about a collab. When Niall tweeted that they're going to try and make a song together, Sean responded that they are in caps lock, which is a great sign. Well done, everyone. We love teamwork, it makes the dream work. Hashtag better together. XOXO. Weezer have just released an entire album of cover tracks, which includes bangers like TLC's No Scrubs and Toto's Africa. R&B girl band, but make it 90s grunge. But obviously Weezer didn't invent the cover, so we've compiled a list of our favorites. Some you might even realize were covers in the first place. Like when seven-year-old me was devastated to discover that Britney Spears' satisfaction was in fact a Rolling Stones classic. Still here for both. Frank Ocean, American Wedding. While Frank penned a new name and set of lyrics, the rest of the track is basically the Eagles Hotel California. And while both are beautifully haunting, Eagles singer Don Henley didn't appreciate the appreciation, even going so far as to call Frank a talentless little <coughs> Ow. It may surprise you that one of James Blake's biggest tracks is actually a cover of Feist. And while the more folksy original has its merits, if we had to choose, our votes on James. Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You. This was actually originally released by Dolly Parton in 1974 and was written for her then duet partner and mentor of seven years, Porter Wagoner, when she decided to part ways with him to pursue a solo career. Whitney later revitalized the track in 92 with her inimitable set of pipes, and then it got an entirely new lease of life in 2011 by an ambitious young girl with a viral YouTube video. And I... Ah! No, say you'll be there. Obviously you can't beat original spy skills, but you can pay great homage, which is exactly what Mo did, complete with an old picture of her and her friends dressed up as the group. Hey look, we've all been there. Amy Winehouse, Valerie. One of Amy's biggest tracks was originally released by indie rock band The Zootons from Liverpool, who incidentally have just announced a reunion tour for 2019, in case you wanna go and see the original Valerie take the stage. Natalie and Brulia, Torn. I know.
I know, we've all been living a lie. This track was actually first released by a Danish singer called Liz Sorensen, then a guitar band called Edna Swap, then Natalie and Brulia turned it into your favorite karaoke track. As one Twitter user writes, every 90s kid comes of age three times, 18th birthday, 21st birthday, the day they find out Natalie and Brulia's version of Torn is a cover. Shook.